Hello everyone, this is Mr. Garner, Superintendent for Grand Blanc Community Schools, uh, coming to you from my new home office, the basement here at my house. I wanted to let all of you know that uh, we are thinking of you during this difficult time. We, we know this has not been easy. Uh, the current situation that we're all dealing with has created a lot of stress and anxiety, uh, not only for our families, but for our extended families, for our healthcare workers, our grocery store workers, law enforcement, um, all of those individuals. It, this has definitely been difficult. Um, I appreciate all of you, though, for doing your part. Um, I see that happening. I'm, I'm watching that happening out on social media as well. Um, we know this isn't easy, but together we will definitely get through this. For our seniors out there, I absolutely I miss all the kids, but, but seniors, I know this is a big year for you, and a lot of your events that have been traditional have been postponed. I want you to know that we're still working on those things. Uh, the key word there is postponed. Um, we will uh, see what we can do uh, as things hopefully um, ease up moving forward into May and June. And I want you to know that our high school administration team, our, our staff up there, they're working on those things still. And as our ideas and plans get put together uh, regarding graduation and some of those other traditional things that, that our seniors uh, get to do that are so exciting for us, we'll make sure that we share all of that with you. Today, though, I wanted to talk with all of you in regards to our continuity of learning plan that was recently developed uh, here in Grand Blanc. Uh, a lot of folks involved in this from teachers to administrators to parents, uh, board members. Um, this is the plan. Once Governor Whitmer decided to close schools for the remainder of the year, it was our charge uh, to put a plan together, a remote learning plan uh, for all of our students here in Grand Blanc. And I say all, but we also understand that for some of you, uh, that may be difficult. And for those of you um, that have circumstances, and there may be many of you, please know that we will work with you. Um, if remote learning does not work for you, obviously uh, you'll hear us talk today about some other options for you. Um, we do not want to create any additional stress uh, or anxiety for you, uh, our students, or for our families. Um, we want to be as flexible as possible, and we will be as flexible as possible. What, what, are you, what are we hoping for? We're hoping that we can continue some type of learning education uh, for the remainder of this year, and it's certainly um, our goal that we're all back in school um, very soon. In this case, I, I guess it would be the fall for next year. But for today, let's go ahead and get started talking about our plan. You're going to see some things on the screen, and you heard me just mention some of these things. Uh, what we believe in, we believe that uh, distant learning, our remote learning plan that we'll share with you today, we understand that that cannot mimic face-to-face -face education. There, there's no, nothing to replace the, the relationship between a teacher and a student. Um, we're going to do the best we can. Our staff, our teachers have been amazing uh, reaching out already. I know that, and we will do the best we can, but we understand um, it, it can't replace the face-to-face -face education. Also, as part of our learning plan, social emotional support is very important to us. So um, if this is not working or your family is struggling uh, with various things even outside of education, uh, that's important for us to know. So please let us know that uh, that is a priority for us uh, beyond this remote educational uh, plan that we're sharing with you today. We want to provide opportunities and incentives for our students to grow without penalizing them. And that's exactly what this particular plan will do. So what is our vision for this continuous learning plan? We want to ensure that all of our students have opportunities for continuing their learning that focuses on critical standards needed for the next grade level. Um, teaching and learning during school shutdown, um, we hope will minimize instructional loss, but we understand for, for some um, that may be difficult, but our goal is to minimize that instructional loss. Uh, we want to ensure that our students and our families are given tools, um, routines, and structures to ensure that they stay connected uh, to our schools, to our teachers, um, and to learning. And, and I have to tell you, I know that's hard, even as I sit here in my basement tonight, um, you know, getting a suit on and stuff. Um, those routines and procedures that we uh, have in place uh, as a society, as students uh, even going to school, um, once we get outside of those, it's sometimes tough to get those back. So we're hoping that we can help you uh, reestablish some of that um, as a family when it comes to learning moving forward. 
Um, our ultimate goal is to support the whole child, including their academic, their mental health, their nutritional health, and their safety needs. That's the goal of this, is that we all get through this together. Our job as a school district is to support uh, the whole child as, as we move forward. We certainly want to make sure that we maintain a personal connection uh, that not only supports the academic work um, for our students, but also, as I said, that mental health and that social emotional health. Um, we understand from day to day situations could change for families and we need to be conscientious of that as a school district. We also understand that um, during these difficult times, simplicity is best. Uh, we want to make sure that we provide clear information and resources for our families as well and in, in as many different modalities also. So what can you expect? You're going to see on your screen there, um, it's broken down. It'll say uh, K2, 3, 5, and 6, 12. And of course, we'll get to um, the specifics on all of those in just a moment. But what can you can expect as a family is on Mondays by 8 p.m., uh, we will have a playlist that will be posted and sent out um, to all of our families that will outline the workload for Monday through Thursday and nothing on Friday. Friday, we're allowing our students obviously to catch up on things, the things that they may not have gotten done Monday through Thursday for a multitude of reasons. We, we understand that. Um, what you can expect workload wise, you can see there at kindergarten through second grade, um, 30 minutes of reading, 20 minutes of math, and you can see the other subjects listed there along with um, lessons uh, with our P2 traits as well, our positivity project. You can see uh, listed for third through fifth grade, again, 30 minutes reading and writing, 30 minutes for math. And again, this is an approximation of what you can see uh, Monday through Friday, what's happening at kindergarten through second grade, third through fifth, and sixth through 12. The playlist is going to allow for student flexibility to complete assignments and create a more efficient form of communication about weekly expectations. So on Monday, it's almost like you get the menu. Here's what's happening Monday through Thursday. Um, based on your child and your, your family situation, um, maybe it works on Monday that uh, that you work a little extra on Monday and you get you get a lot done on Monday, but, but maybe due to things that you can't work on Tuesday. Again, flexibility is the key. The other part is what are we trying to accomplish here? We're trying to keep some form of learning moving forward um, as we get our students ready, obviously, for the next grade level. So what can you expect then? You can expect a continuation also of our special education services to the extent possible. So if you um, have a special needs student, um, our special education consultants uh, will be in contact with your family. Uh, Mrs. Bailey, our special ed director as well. Um, I'm sure they've already reached out to, to all of you, but you'll can, that will continue as we move forward with this plan. And all of our staff members who work with students will have designated weekly office hours which will be communicated to the students and the parents. So uh, principals, assistant principals, student advisors, um, counselors, student liaison, social workers, our teachers, all of them uh, will have office hours so that uh, students, parents, you can reach out to them directly if you have questions about uh, the playlist or the lessons that are taking place uh, throughout the week. So I want to thank our staff for that as well. I know you've been working very hard to ensure that communication is open with our families. Speaking of communication, um, I will let you know that our building administration, they will be reaching out on a weekly basis to our families of students who are not participating in learning opportunities. As I mentioned, there are various reasons why a family or a student may not be able to participate. We understand that. Um, your social, emotional, mental health, as we said, is our first priority for you as a family. Um, but if we don't hear from you, we're going to reach out and see what we can do to help you or if there's anything that you need from us. So um, we're going to do our best to stay in contact with all of you. So you'll see on the screen now our communication expectations. Um, you can see there I've talked about um, some of this, but um, these are the procedures that we're going to use to make uh, connections during this time. Um, the predominant method will probably be email, obviously. So uh, if you need to talk to somebody, shoot them a quick email. Um, it is our staff's, um, our staff has been very good, I should say, about getting back uh, in a very timely manner. Uh, we understand though our staff as well. They have families and they have situations uh, that, that they're dealing with. So we, we understand that it has to be reasonable uh, for them um, as well. But uh, teachers will send out weekly playlists to students and families through Jupyter email. So you'll be getting that, uh, a list of weekly office hours for the staff on the playlist. You'll see that as well. 
Um, there will be a coordination of virtual class meetings. Um, we're really designating a minimum of four hours per week for our virtual office hours for our staff. So uh, roughly an hour a day, Monday through Thursday. On Friday, uh, we're using that time not only for our students to catch up, but for our staff members to collaborate um, so that they can get their playlist ready for the next week. Obviously, we want to maintain email communication with our parents and students, um, and if need be, we will certainly schedule phone or video conferencing with parents and students as needed. Um, we also know this, this is not going to be uh, perfect. We, there will be bumps in the road here um, as circumstances change, as we learn a little bit more about uh, doing this 100% remotely. Um, but I will tell you this, our community has been incredibly supportive. You have uh, been outstanding as parents. Uh, I know our students, uh, I know you guys miss each other. Uh, we miss you, um, but we're going to get through it. Over the next six to eight weeks, we will learn a ton about this, um, about how to uh, roll out something like this on this scale. Uh, right now, over 8,000 devices are out here in Grand Blanc. Um, it's not something that we have done before, but I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your support. You, you have been magnificent as, as we've gotten this going. So know this, um, we're here for you. We miss you. Um, I wish all of you could be here with me today in my basement. That, that would be wonderful. Um, and we hope that we get to see all of you very, very soon. We'll keep communicating. We'll keep sending information out to you. Um, in the meantime, if you need anything from us, anything, uh, please reach out, let us know, and we'll be there for you. Thanks, everybody. Hello, Grand Blanc families. I'm Amber Hall, Curriculum Director for the Grand Blanc Community School District. I wanted to share some details about our continuity of learning plan at the elementary level. We know that it is important for our students to continue their learning journey to the extent possible to prepare for the next grade level and minimize instructional loss. At the same time, our number one priority is to support our student and family needs, and we know that flexibility is key during these times. Speaking of flexibility, due to the changed learning environment, students will not receive letter grades in kindergarten through fifth grade for the fourth marking period. However, teachers will give a written description to communicate a student's overall learning progress from April 13th through June 12th on the report cards for marking period four. So what will the marking period look like? Elementary students will receive what we are calling a playlist from their teacher each Monday morning beginning this week, April 13th, for the week. Grades K through second grade should expect about one to one and a half hours of schoolwork per day, Monday through Thursday. Fridays are catch up. Grades three through five should expect about one and a half to two hours per day, Monday through Thursday. And again, Fridays are catch up day. Students are not expected to follow a certain schedule. Please do what works for your family. We know that families have different schedules and different needs during this time. Teachers will check in on a, day, on a weekly basis and they will hold office hours that they will communicate for both students and parents. Students will receive work online from their teachers, but if paper packets are required, please contact your child's teacher or principal. Work will include reading and writing, math, science and social studies, and even activities for music, art, gym, technology exploration, and positivity project as well. Again, our number one priority is to serve our students' best interest, and we know that every family has a different situation. So please reach out to your child's teacher, student liaison, or principal to partner with them to ensure your students' needs are met to the best extent possible. My name is Allison Walrus, and I'm the Assistant Curriculum Director for Grand Blanc Community Schools. I would like to talk to you about our middle school students, what they should expect from their teachers with our continuity of learning plan, and how they will be graded at the end of the school year. As you already know, middle school students will receive a playlist from their teachers by 8 o'clock every Monday morning with content that will cover Monday through Thursday with a work day on Friday. Students should plan on about 30 minutes of content per subject every day, but the plan is flexible and students can complete work 
when it is the most appropriate for them and their families. For middle school students, the third marking period ended on March 12th, the last day that we were in school. Students have until Friday, April 17th, to try to improve their third marking period grades. Students should reach out to their teachers to see what they need to do if they want to bring their grades up. The content for marking period four begins on April 13th and will be graded. At the end of the school year, students will have a few options for their grades. If students are happy with the letter grade they receive for marking period four, they can choose to take that passing grade and have it count toward their final overall grade. Students who choose option one will have a final grade that is made up of all four marking periods. If students would not prefer not to have their fourth marking period grade count toward their overall grade, they will choose option two to take the course for credit, and their final grade for the year will be based on the first three marking periods. Finally, if students are unable to complete the work for fourth marking period or do not pass fourth marking period, they will have a final grade that is based on their first three marking period grades. Students can choose one of the options based on each individual class, not all their classes overall. So they might choose option one for one course and option two for another. If a student is taking a course like Spanish two or Algebra one for high school credit, their grading will follow the plan that Mr. Frey will be explaining next for 9th through 11th grade students. In addition, if a student is taking an online course, that course should be completed as normal and will follow the regular grading process. I hope that this has helped you to understand our continuity of learning plan for middle school students. However, everyone is in a unique position. And if you have any questions specific to your student, please reach out to their teacher, their counselor, or their building principal. We are all here to support you during this difficult and unusual time. Hello, Grand Lake High School families. This is Mike Frey, principal, here to go through the grading possible outcomes for all of our students here uh, for the remainder of the year. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, first gonna look at grades nine through 11. Uh, when you look at these grades, these are certainly students who um, we're looking forward to having back in the fall. And we want to make sure that we continue to provide opportunities for new learning so that when they return in the fall, um, they're ready to hit the ground running um, with the next course. Uh, so when you look here, you'll see that the first option is students can simply earn uh, a grade in a traditional sense. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we have modified our grade calculation a little bit. We will not be having final exams this year. Instead, we will be looking at two equally weighted marking periods. Uh, marking period three, as you have heard over the last week, ended on March 12th, uh, with students having the opportunity through this Friday, April 17th, to uh, redo or retake any work they need to improve that grade. Um, starting today, April 13th, uh, through the end of their school year in June, um, they will be working on marking period four. Uh, this equates to eight weeks worth of this virtual learning environment where each Monday they get their new playlist uh, with work to complete. Uh, the grade earned at the end of this eight week period will be averaged equally with the marking period three grade to come up with the final semester grade. That final semester grade will be placed on the transcript and will be calculated into the GPA if the student and family makes the choice to do so under option one. Option two is for students who, again, continue to complete work, and that's important. Uh, we do want you to stay engaged to the best of your ability with new material for the remainder of the year. Um, we will take the marking period three grade, we will average it with the grade from marking period four, uh, and you will, if you choose this option two, um, you can replace the grade earned with simply a credit on your transcript. Um, the benefit to doing that is it will not negatively impact your GPA calculation. So for students who maybe um, are having challenges with this new learning environment, we certainly appreciate that. Um, we wanted to give you an opportunity to still earn your credit, stay on track for graduation, but also be able to protect your GPA from a grade that's below your standards um, and prior years or, or in prior courses. So option two, again, requires doing work through the remainder of the year, but it does allow you to uh, protect your GPA from maybe a, a, a less than uh, stellar performance that you're used to, and you can choose credit. 
Finally, um, the last one is really not an option. The last one is uh, results from a situation where a student was failing in marking period three, um, it was unable to do enough work uh, during the next eight weeks to earn a passing semester grade. Uh, we would turn their grades into a no credit um, and they would need to be working with their counselors on our credit recovery plan uh, to make sure that they're on track to graduate come the end of their high school experience. Looking at seniors, uh, seniors are a little bit different. Uh, first of all, their school year ends earlier, as they know. Um, their last day of classes would have been May 15th with exams on the following Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna stay with that timeline. So for seniors, they have about a month left. Uh, Friday, May 15th will be the end of their school year with us. Um, we are still gonna look at two marking period grades, so that's important. Uh, marking period three, treated exactly as it has been for ninth through 11th grade. Uh, it will be the grade earned through March 12th work with the opportunity throughout this Friday, April 17th to retake or redo or make up any work necessary to improve that marking period three grade. Uh, you will notice a new option on the screen. For seniors only, um, you do have the option to take the grade you earned in marking period three as your final course grade. Um, again, this is a senior only option. If you completed your work through March 12th, you are happy with the grade that you have earned. It is your option to choose that as your final course grade and to be done with work in that course. Um, that grade will go on your transcript. It will be calculated into your GPA. Um, but again, that's a senior only option to take the mar marking period three grade as a final course grade and be done with the course. Um, option two is a student who would uh, like to continue working through a May, May 15th to improve their course grade. Maybe marking period three is not quite where you wanted it to be. You wanna work uh, this next month on the work provided by teachers to um, earn a better marking period four grade. And at that point, we would average marking period three and marking period four together to give you a final semester grade. Again, you would earn that grade, it would go on your transcript, it would be calculated into your GPA. Option three is for a student who continues to work through marking period four um, they've earned a passing grade in the class, but they're not happy with the GPA impact of that grade, and they would like to choose to take credit in place of the grade. Um, that is an option that you will be able to make in May uh, to just simply take credit for the course. Uh, that credit, again, goes on your transcript. It meets graduation requirements. However, it will not have any impact on your grade point average. And then finally, again, the last outcome is the same as 9th through 11th grade. If you were failing a course on March 12th at the end of marking period 3, and you do not do enough work between now and May 15th to earn a passing grade in that course, you will be given a grade of no credit. Um, for seniors, this is important. That no credit grade means that you may have not met your high school graduation requirements. So it will be very important that you have been in touch with your counselors to know where you stand on graduation requirements. For those of you who are in a credit recovery situation, you must complete your credit recovery courses. If you are enrolled in online coursework, you must complete in full your online courses. Um, those two things must be completed if you were enrolled in them prior to the shutdown on March 12th. Again, um, if you have questions on any of these options, how they relate to a specific course, please ask the teacher. If it's about graduation requirements, please reach out to your counselor. Um, if there's any other questions you have that need clarity, please don't hesitate to reach out to anyone on the administrative team and we will make sure that we get you the answer you need. Um, I wanna just wish everybody the best. I hope that everybody's uh, staying home and staying safe and healthy. And uh, you know, we look forward to getting back together as soon as possible. Seniors, we miss you, we haven't forgotten about you, and we're working hard to come up with a way to celebrate your achievement together. Um, so please stay tuned over the next few weeks as we work on some different options that will give all of us the opportunity to get together and celebrate your high school graduation. Thank you, have a great day, and go Bobcats.